All right, so this is your final step of your ecology note. So this will be the last video, and it's going to focus primarily on human impact. So the biggest question, of course, is the human population growth. So why does it keep growing? Is it going to grow forever? Do we have a carrying capacity? And if you remember, on the previous notes, we talked about carrying capacity and how it is the maximum number that can be supported by the environment. So, if you look at this, this shows the projected for 2050. So it's showing us almost right about 10 billion. And you look, this even shows developing regions versus industrialized. So we're considered an industrialized region. But your developing regions are having even more substantial human population growth. And no one really knows the answer necessarily to this. It's just there's lots of theories on it. So another big topic is the global temperature versus carbon dioxide. So the global temperature has been linked to carbon dioxide. So you have the red line here. That's showing your carbon dioxide, your quantities in the atmosphere. The blue line is your global temperature. <clears throat> so if you look, sometimes, like here, it drops below the carbon dioxide line. And sometimes, like here, <clears throat> it goes way up. So this is, this is part of the reason why that there's conflicting opinions as to whether humans are actually causing global warming or if it's just the normal way that the world is functioning. Now, there's also other ways that carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. It's not just from our cars and our factories. The ocean produces carbon dioxide. The soil produces carbon dioxide. So there's other ways it gets into the atmosphere. You also have some factors that contribute to why the population has grown so fast. So things like agriculture. We have more domesticated animals. We have factory farming. We have lots and lots and lots of animals created in mass quantities, which helps feed more people. So more people can survive healthily because they have access to these things. Machines also make it easier. And then you have things like monoculture. If you remember, mono means one. So monoculture just would mean an entire field of corn. So we can produce these really massive quantities of things without really it costing that much money. You also have things like medical advancements. So sewer systems were really, really important when they were first invented because they kept everything clean. They kept diseases out of was like your living areas. They weren't you weren't walking through sewer in the streets. And then medicine has also been a huge contributor. People are living longer and health more healthy because of advancements advancements in medicine. Then you also have the industrial revolution which was just America or North America specifically catching up with all the other industrialized nations. So all these machines were invented basically making the human job easier. And then we'll talk about this in class. So here are some problems with humans. So we have invasive species, and this can either come from naturally moving or hitching a ride on like a boat or a plane or something, or released pets. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, animal captivity is contributing to the d endangerment problem and there's more and more animals that aren't being in their natural environment so you're ruining that those ecosystems that need those animals to function and then poaching which leads to species extinction of course the big one is pollution global warming and the greenhouse effect which we'll talk about in one minute deforestation is just clear cutting your forests and then you have biomagnification and eutrophication which we will discuss in detail. So here's just some examples. So these are your zebra mussels. And what they do is they basically clear the water too much and they hitch onto boats. So if you take your boat out of one lake and they're on there and then you put it in another lake, then they end up in that lake too and they make it to where some species of fish can't survive. This is an example of a python that's in the Everglades and he's eating an endangered bird. So this is a released pet that has become an invasive species. So both of these on this side are invasive species. And you have your captivity here 
and your ivory here. And then this graph is interesting because it shows our human population versus extinction rate. So the extinction rate has gone all the way up as well, just as fast as the human population has grown. Some more issues, so of course the global warming and the polar bears and ice caps melting. You have your pollution here, your clear cutting, more pollution, and then this is a picture of an algae bloom, and that's eutrophication, which we'll, I'll show you. So the greenhouse effect. This is basically, summing it up, when the planet is created to feel more like a greenhouse. So there's more and more gases being released into the air, but if you look at this picture down here, this shows natural, this shows human enhanced. So the natural, this barrier is a lot thinner, but here, the barrier is much thicker. So all of this heat that is coming in and being radiated off the earth isn't really escaping like it's supposed to over here. Over here, more heat escapes. So the problem is the climate, the overall climate of the planet is becoming warmer because of all this trapped heat. And then this picture here just shows you some examples of how it ends up here. So you have your fossil fuels, you have your engines, your CFCs from aerosol cans, deforestation, they also burn. So all of these things release gases that make the environment warmer. So biomagnification is definitely a term you need to know. So it's the movement of toxic substances up the food chain. But the issue here is that your top carnivores have the most toxins. So if you look, unfortunately in the food chain, we as humans are those top carnivores. So we get the most. The red dots that you see all over this picture symbolize the amount of mercury. And if you're going fishing, which fish do you want to catch? The big one or one of the little ones? Well, you want the big one, right? But here's the problem. The little fish ate the plant, which has a little bit of mercury. So now the little fish has the mercury from the plant in itself. Now the big fish is going to eat all these little fish and it gets all of that mercury. So now we catch the big fish. And as a result, we got all of the mercury that the big fish had consumed from the smaller fish from the plant. So this is why you have limits on the amount of fish, for example, that you're supposed to consume. Or even when women are pregnant, they're not supposed to eat as much fish because of the mercury content. And then another issue, and another term you need to know, is eutrophication. So this is the excess buildup of nitrogen and phosphates. So this goes back to those two cycles that we learned about. And as a result, it causes pollution in the water. So runoff was in the water cycle, but water is running off into the oceans, of course, or lakes. Well, that water, as it runs off, it picks up things from farm fields or cities. And it has all this nitrogen and phosphorus in it which is causing this layer in the lake. Well, what happens is this layer blocks oxygen. So oxygen won't go to the bottom, but algae feeds on oxygen. So now, instead of the oxygen going to the bottom, it goes in and stays at the surface. So as a result, you have tons of algae that bloom because they are just loving all of that oxygen that's on the top of the surface. And if we go back to this picture here, this is what it can ultimately look like. It's just green, gross, nasty water on top because of the intense algae blooms. And that's it.